Hey everyone, I am Fred Robinson with Team Body Helix. We make very cool compression. I hope you check us out at bodyhelix.com. Today I want to try to make the game simple for you. In some areas it's gotten too complicated with the rules, the regulations. Players are playing on their leagues. They're trying to figure out what can I do, what can I do. So we're going to talk about the LETs. Now, these LETs are approved by the USTA, the ITF, the ATP, the WTA, the USDA, the American Medical Association, and even Homeland Security, maybe. So let's talk about the LETs and how they've changed. And you're gonna, maybe you'll wanna write these down, take some notes. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe to this channel. If you're on YouTube, click the alert notification. That way when I post a new video, you'll get notified. When we were playing matches previously, if a ball fell out of our pocket, and a lot of players know this, or if your hat falls off, blows off, and it's windy, you would call a let. But now we have to be more specific with our language. It's proper. So when I'm playing a match, the ball drops out or my hat falls off my head, I have to call a droplet, okay? So it's not just a let. Ball drops out of your pocket. It makes perfect sense. This is simple. It's a droplet. Now, when the ball comes on the court, if the ball is coming onto the court and it hasn't gotten to the hash mark, that's that little mark at the center of the baseline, if the ball hasn't gotten there yet, of course there's only one thing we're going to call this. That's going to be called an inlet. Once it passes that mark, it then becomes an outlet. So we're specific. Everybody knows it's simple. Hey, inlet. Oh, didn't get to the hash mark. Uh, outlet. It's on its way out. They know what's happening. If you're playing outside, you're on a clay court, there are some leaves out there, of course, ball hits a leaf, it's a shot you know you could have made, but it just scoots under your racket and you miss it, you just play the point over. You just call, I'm going to call a leaflet. If it hits a little twig or a branch, it's only one thing you can call it, you call it a branchlet. If you're playing on clay courts and sometimes they have divots, little craters out there, and the ball hits one of those and you were set up and you knew you were going to hit a winner but it took a bad bounce and it caused you to make an error. Playing the point over, I'm going to call a crater let. Now, if you play with a little donut in your racket, and a lot of players play those, it can be really annoying when you're up at the net and you're volleying and that thing keeps popping out of your racket. You can't help it if the, you can't hit the ball here on your racket and it's accidentally sometimes you hit it down here. It just flies out in the middle of the point. Now we have a new, a new let. You just simply call a dough let. If you're serving, and this is important, if you're serving and the ball hits a net and falls into the box, but it's the first one, it's called a singlet. If you do it again, can't call it the same thing. It's not the same thing. Now it's happened twice. It has to be called a doublet. If you do it again, then you call it a triplet. If you do it again, it's a quadruplet. Now you just continue this out until one plus infinity. If you get out there, it becomes complicated. It's too much. You go back and you start with singlet again. If you're playing a match, and this has happened to me, I'm sure it's happened to a lot of you, and you go up to hit an overhead and the sun is right in your eyes, or you're trying to hit a serve and the sun is in your eyes and it, and it uh, causes you to miss the ball, a shot you know you would have made, an overhead you know you would have put away. It's not your overhead. It was the sun. What do you do? You call an ultraviolet. If you're playing a match and you're in doubles and you get hit in the eye, you're going to call, of course, you're going to call an eyelet. Now, there's a sublet category to the eyelet, and that is if somebody whacks a ball at you and it doesn't actually hit you in the eye, but it impairs your vision, meaning you close your eyes and you scream, you still get to call an eyelet. If you get hit with a ball and it's going to leave a mark on your arm for a long time, that can only be called a scarlet, okay? So just remember that. If you get in the arm, it's an armlet. If you get hit in the ankle, it's an anklet. If you get hit in the wrist, it's a wristlet. If they hit you in the rib, it's a riblet. If you get hit in the sleeve, like this cool body helix sleeve that I have on here, if you get hit here, you're going to call a sleevelet. Think about it. If you had one of these on all over your body, you could call those all over the place. It could, you could have one on your knee, you could have one on your calf, some players do. You could have it on your elbow. You call sleevelets. Um, so if you're wearing one of those older 
braces that are black, bulky things that are uncomfortable. They have the sticky Velcro things on them. You still get to call a let. But what you call, if you're wearing one of those, you don't get to call a sleevelet. You have to call a bracelet. Now, if you happen to be wearing that bandage, stretchy stuff that they put on, the old gauze tape, it's a 100-year-old technology. I don't know why you would do that, but if you did, you will get to call something, and it's called a no-let. You might ask me, well, coach, what is a no-let? A no-let is you don't get a let because the game has passed you by. You don't get anything. You just wear that stuff. If you're up at the net or your opponent's up at the net and they move and they hit a volley and the ball hits their frame or it hits their handle and the ball goes over and it falls over, it doesn't take any skill to do that at all. You know it. They know it. You just say, time out throw them the ball, we're playing the point over, and they want to know why, you call in the skill it. Now, if you're playing a point where someone drop shots you and you come running in and you get to the ball and you run it down, and then they lob the ball on the audacity, then they lob the ball over your head, now you have to run and get it. And they're toying with you, okay? You run it down, you get it, you lob it back, and they hit another drop shot. They're toying with you out there catch the ball, say, we're not doing this anymore, we're starting this point over, throw them the ball, and when they want to know why, of course, you're going to call a toilet on them. So if you're playing uh, doubles and you hit a beautiful return cross court, you crack one, it's a nice shot, and your opponent has the audacity to cut across and poach and put it away, you stop them. Again, you just catch the ball, you throw it back over, you go, not happening today, throw the ball back and what are you going to call? There's only one thing you can call if they cut across the net. You call a cutlet. It's simple. The game is so simple. Now what's really cool is, and that, and that gets rid of all the poaching. There's no more nonsense about them cutting and poaching your balls. They can't do it. They're not allowed. You just call cutlets whenever they do it. So you're playing and you're coming into the net and your partner, your partner is cutting in front of you and they're taking the balls away from you that you know you could crush and look like a hero and put away, but they're, they're hogging the balls. You get to call a let on them. What do you call? You call a, a piglet. So you have a cutlet if they're cutting in, and you have a piglet if your partner is picking the ball. If people are next to the court and you hear them giggling or you miss a shot and people are giggling, stop, play it over, calling a giglet. Now, if you're playing doubles and you get hit, boys, if you get hit with the ball in the gonads, there, this is a specific uh, set of lets. You need to pay attention. If you get hit with the ball and it's going to take you zero to five minutes to recover, you call a nut let. If it's going to take you five to ten minutes to recover, that hurts more, you're going to call an owl let. If it's going to take you 10 minutes to infinity to recover, you're down for the count, you call a howlet. So again, you have a nutlet, you have an owlet, and you have a howlet. Now, if you're playing Florida and you're playing outside, um, you may not know this, but pelicans, they are highly intelligent creatures. They have fully developed sphincter muscles, and they have a really cool sense of humor. So if you're out playing a match, and you see a pelican or several of them coming towards your court and they're lining up, you cannot call an eyelet or even think about it if you look up. Do not, first of all, don't look up if you see a pelican flying overhead because if you do, you're going to get what you deserve. Cover up, wait for them to fly by. But if they happen to drop on your court, there's only one thing you can do, and that is you call a what? A pellet. They're pelicans. See, I'm making this game so simple for everyone. So let's say that we are now playing a match, and this, this happens, and this used to create a lot of anger on the court, but that, all that anger stuff is now gone. We don't need it anymore. Uh, the racket breaking and smashing, there's no need. We've got a let to take care of this. You're playing, your ball lands three inches in both ways, uh, inside the line, your opponent calls it out, or the team calls it out, and you're thinking in your mind, that is total bullshit. Oh, you thought I was going to say a bad word, but this is a video, and I don't say bad words on videos. You never, never say bad words on video because you don't know who's going to be listening to it.
You don't have to get worked up. You don't have to get angry or mad. You just smile and say, hey, not going to happen today. Mm -mm, playing it over. I'm calling a bull let on you. So here's the let that you want to remember today. It's the most, the most important one. And that is when you're playing, if um, somebody calls a, a pellet or if they call a skill let, if they call a dough let, whatever they're calling, and you don't like it, you have three seconds to make this call. You can, in three seconds, call a what, do you think? You call an unlet. And if you call an unlet, that undoes their let, and then you have to go back and play. So that takes care of that. If you didn't write this down, and you're trying to remember these, and you, and you need a refresher on them, you can reach out to us. And when you do, uh, send us an email, send us a text, and say, hey, could you please send me a, what are you going to ask for? You're going to ask for a pamphlet. Could you please send me a pamphlet? And I want the pamphlet that's called Let's for Nincompoops. I hope I've made the game simple for you today. Doesn't need to be confusing. And this will help you on the court in your next match. This is your tip from Body Helix. Move through it.